so poorly. In the, his clubs have been through this in a tough ACC. Look at this. They got Womack in for the defense. Quickness. Yep. Quickness. Reeves also for some quickness. Williams playing uh, the safety position. They're going to face guard. Try and deny the ball in bounds. Beat him to the spot. Leitner gets it over Othic. They got it. They tie it. Great steal. they did in that possession. They really panicked with the basketball, turned it over, sloppy reverse pass by Christian Leitner to Grant Hill, and the Arizona wackos say, hey, Cameron Crazies, we can go wacky too. Now see, here's the trap. Now look at the clock. There's the reverse, but it's a tough pass to handle. Great play by Othic, but pounce on the ball, and he dumps it to Womack. Matt Othic just redeemed uh, himself completely with that play. He had a tough first half particularly, but he was in there slowing and stretching. That was Muehlbach, not out the key. Watch right here. See Muehlbach 24? Here he comes rotating over. Now he's going to pop the ball loose. His hustle with scrappy ability, and he pounces it to Womack. I understand, but it was Othic that shut the door and made him throw the ball there, and it was Muehlbach, the man who said this morning, that I want to go home and uh, never lose a game at home during my four years at Arizona. Yeah, that is a heck of an accomplishment. And I'll tell you, Duke has really played sloppy, something you don't see late in the game. The missed free throws, mishandling the ball. But you got to give a lot of credit to Arizona, their coaching strategy, and also their tenacity and the ability not to quit and fold. And when you got 60 in a row, you don't fold. Out of Romack, Muehlbach, Reeves, Othic, and Williams. Base guarding, too, trying to make it tough to get him down. Grant Hill inbounds it to Bobby Hurley. Oh, what a foul here. Leitner to the baseline. And there's a whistle down there, and the foul is called on Brian Williams. See, I don't think that was a good possession by Duke. Now, they ended up going to the free throw line, so that can be the positive. But really, with a tie game, possession in the basketball, unless he had the high percentage layup right there, you back it out and you try to get that high percentage shot right down, take the clock to its final moment. Leitner goes to the line for Duke. Is there some irony there, huh? Yeah, remember as a freshman, shooting a one-on-one with one second to go, down two. A little less pressure, though, Keith, because the score is tied. Then down to one second. Got to make both one on one He missed, actually, the one on one Everybody knows that in that game. Listen to this crowd. One-point lead, Duke. Comfortable as can be on that free throw, but remember this now, a lot of time left for Arizona. 12.2 yeah, seconds. No timeouts, though, for Arizona. Made them both. Now let's see what they do. They're going to run it up into the big guy and go for the OT. I say you go for the OT and try to get the overtime at home. Brooks for the basket. And a great play. A timeout to spin, and they stop it at 1.6. Great play. They come up with the conversion against UCLA. They went zero, but it's 1.6. See, they're going to put Womack up on the baseline with his size, trying to umbrella and to bother the inbounds in a basketball. Well, we'll sit here for a moment until they get 1.6 back on the clock. Remember? They found it against Womack. Brian Davis is against Muehlbach. They look to go deep with it. Leitner comes out. Othic spoils it. Ball goes out of bounds, and we're in OT. I think a smart decision by Lute Olsen in Arizona to dump the ball inside for Brooks and to go for the OT, especially at home. We will be back with overtime in ABC's college basketball after this word from our ABC station. Trouble as we go to it. Palmer's out. Thomas Hill is out. Grant Hill playing with four. So is Christian Leitner for Duke. Arizona. Williams has four. Mills has four. Out at four. So uncharacteristic the way Duke handled the end of the game. Really did not play like a typical Duke basketball team down the stretch. Into Rooks against Kubek. 
big advantage Rooks. They hook it to Williams, and Bryan hits it, and Arizona goes to the lead. Well, they go to the two big horses. They go to Williams. They go to Rooks to get it to OT. They go to Williams to get the advantage. Let's see Grant Hill now. She'll go one-on-one. -on -one. Hurley got loose, gives it up for Kubek's three. What a great look by Bobby Hurley. He was aware of the presence of Kubek, who spotted up on the three-point line. Back into Williams. Oh, they miss Rooks. He was wide open. Williams left hands it and gets a roll. Just too big inside, Keith. That physical strength that powered down in the baseline, Rooks and Williams. Five minute overtime. We've burned a minute. Kubek finally gets it back to Hurley. Grant Hill, remember, has four. So does Christian Leitner. Hurley bounces it away to Leitner. Bobby Hurley has just made two sensational plays. The one where he flared the ball out to Kubek, and then the little drop bounce pass to Leitner. The great look. Had his head off. Good vision. That's a quarter. That's the 83, double. 82. Duke leads by one. Back to Rooks inside. He's fouled by Hurley. Hurley rotating down, trying to trap, trying to double up. Lou Olson really played a great compliment as we look at the game reset here. Each get one extra timeout in the OT, so they both have one. Look at the team fouls are in the bonus. Possession goes to Duke. But he paid a great compliment in today's paper. He said, Bob Hurley and Christian Layton are the heart and guts of this basketball team. He says, Hurley is such a catalyst to this team. He does exactly what you want a quarterback to do. Pressure the basketball and distribute the basketball. Blue Devils are going to have a long night. They're probably going to get a, a good Mexican dinner. <laughs> then they got a 12:30 plane back to the East Coast. I flew with the Duke team here today, and I can tell you this: for the president of Duke and all the people at Duke, you talk about class, Keith. You should have seen the way they handled themselves on that plane. 80. Yeah. Brooks didn't even get it up there. We're even at 82. Not getting that follow through on his free throw. It's a little short. You know, they took the that uh, the shot by Kubek. Uh, they took it away. It's not a three-pointer. They'll make it a two-pointer. Oh, they made it a deuce. They yep. changed it. Duke comes out of there with that rebound as Rooks misses two free throw. And we're at 320 in the overtime. In the Leitner. Rooks is on him right now. Hurley way out. Full go. Rebound. Ryan. Ryan Williams has become a star. Now's the time for some poise and patience. Nope, they go to Rooks and he takes it right home. Get the great angle. They have the tremendous angle to the baseline. He posted up really strong. Excellent post move by Rooks. He's a bona fide big time post player. Grant Hill gives it up. And Brian Davis is fouled. At 2.45 to go in the overtime, and Arizona leading 84-82. It really blows my mind when I think about a guy like Sean Rooks with his ability and to think that he doesn't exert himself a little bit more defensively. Ted Koppel will be along at 6.30 with a special report of the Gulf War from ABC News. If we go past 6.30, I'm told that we'll join it in progress. Davis misses. And this two big ones also near the end of the game, Brian. Tough defensive effort he gave the other night. I was in the stands when they played North Carolina State, and he locked up Rodney Monroe. Not an easy job to do in the second half. Hell of the four points. He got one of them. Now we're back to the odd number now at one point. 84-83, Arizona. Arizona, they're, they're really executing well on the boxes now. Inside, intended for Brian Williams. He went one way, the ball the other, and Duke's got it. Well, they didn't have the angle. Should have got the ball over to the wing. Sloppy ball handling all day long at times by both teams. Both teams really exerting themselves though defensively, Keith. Yep. Leitner inside, hooks it. No. And Kubek goes thundering in and maybe whistle for the foul right there as Gilbot gets up limping. It is Kubek, and it's his fourth. 
little limp right there by Matt Muehlbach, really, really hurting. He's a good free throw shooter, though. He'd be the guy you'd want on the line if you loot Olsen. You may have to take him out after the free throw. He's a gutty guy. He's going to want to shoot these. He's one of their premier free throw shooters. Oh, he's going to shoot the free throw. He's got Womack up. And Womack, I think, is going to come in for Muehlbach right after he shoots. Yeah, for defense, if he converts throw. these. This is another example as Womack's coming in for defense with Brooks. Brooks, yeah. But see when your legs are not into it, you can't get your legs into your shot, and that's what really affected Muehlbach, an excellent shooter. Got the second. 85-83, Arizona by two. McCaffrey in for Duke. Grant Hill, Ryan Davis, Christian Leitner, Hurley with the ball. And a double screen right there for Glenn McCaffrey from over a double snap. McCaffrey can shoot the ball. Leitner wanted the ball there. Oh, did he want the ball? Grant Hill, no. Rebound. What a great hustle, though, by Grant Hill. Tremendous hustle by both clubs. Hasn't been really a well-played game, but an intense game. 85-83, Arizona, 141 to play in the overtime. See, now Duke, the pressure's on. They have to come up with a big defensive stop right here. I think trap and a whistle and a foul, Hurley. See, the one great asset they have, two guards that can make free throws. And when you talk about the big games of postseason time, so many of them are determined by that free throw line. As you look at Jesse Evans on the left, along with Lute Olsen. I think Gordon the line now with two shots. And a tough first half with those five turnovers. That's a big point right there. He's played outstanding basketball the last 10 minutes. Made some real good decisions. He initially signed in New Mexico, then committed verbally to UNLV, and then ultimately came here. Williams got the rebound. Rolls it up, and he won't go down. 86-83. Still alive. Wow. He's keep alive. He converts that team. It would have been all over. Yep. Wilbach really matching up on McCaffrey. He knows that he wants to use the screen for the jumper. Hurley from the corner. Got it. He's Ruben. He says, McCaff, get me the rock, baby. And Hurley spots up the reverse rolls. Instead of the point guard going to the shooter, the shooter goes to the point guard. Two points. Ryan Williams loses the ball. Dives on it. It's rolling around and... Ballesteros has called a foul on McCaffrey. I'll tell you, that was created by the hustle of Brian Williams. If he would have pouted and sulked and just sat there, Duke would have came up, Duke would have come up with that loose ball. 87-86, Williams going to the line for Arizona. Arizona leading by one, and we welcome all of you who have been watching the other games. 58.6 seconds left to play in overtime. And uh, the scoreboard is now, it should be 86 apiece, shouldn't it? The scoreboard showing 87, and that can't be right. It's 86 apiece. There it is. Brian Williams, a 68% shooter, Keith, on that free throw line. He's had an intense second half. Played 58.6 seconds. Uh, well, how much? happened in the regulation times last minute, huh? Unbelievable. <laughs> this guy's had some second half. Misses the free throw. Remember, those of you who have just joined, this is the building where the Arizona Wildcats have a 60-game home winning streak. Arizona really struggling on that free throw this line. Too. He saw, saw that percentage. Well, let's see what Duke does with this possession right here. And use some clock. Leitner comes out to help. 
Tie game at 86. Right now, your option's got to be Leitner on the inside, McCaffrey on the perimeter. I see they're going to their delay game, trying to get a backdoor cut after they run the clock or an isolation. There's the Grant Hill is fouled by Brian Williams and will shoot two. What a great call by the Duke coaches. They go to the wings and they go to the situation where they isolate. They isolate. That's Grant. the fifth foul for Brian Williams. He's out of the game. See, they isolate Grant Hill against Williams. He can't check him. He needs help. But you can't get help in the kind of offensive set that Duke was in. Played a great second half, though. This guy, you ready for this? In the first half, he, he was one for two. He had four points. Finished with 26 points, 10 rebounds, and two assists. He has finally lived up to all the expectations that were laid on him last year. He gets the standing ovation. He goes out now. Ed Stokes, the seven-footer, the sophomore, has got to come in here and assume the role. Not bad when you can go to a guy like Stokes who's been starting <laughs> to come in for you. They have the big three that they can rotate, Rooks, Stokes, and Williams. Grant Hill. My goodness. Freshman, 6'7", 205, Reston, Virginia. Daddy Calvin Hill. 29.7 seconds to play in overtime. He's got it. That's a third in a row he has made. He missed his two a little bit earlier, then he made three in a row. As you look at Williams, putting a little towel on his face, perspiring. This guy has really become a grown-up, I think, today. I really am impressed with the way he has attacked the basket. He hasn't been passive. I think in the other games I've seen him, he's had a tendency to be a little too passive. Duke by two, 88-86, into Rooks, double, turn. He's got Stokes available, and don't get it to him, and go back to Rooks. He's doubled, and it's knocked out of bounds at 15 seconds to play. Great job of cutting his angle on his drive. Bielbach will play it in. Ed Koppel next with a report from the Persian Gulf. Shot by Chris Mills. Ties the game at 88. Bobby Hurley. I'd get it to Hill. I'd get it to Hill for a one-on-one. -on -one. Arizona's got the ball. It's good. Oh. Close. Oh, oh and double you got up a two. second overtime in this oh. ballgame. Hey, pull up Dennis Swanson. Do we get overtime? Our president? I mean, every week. Absolutely oh. incredible ballgame. This has been. Wow. We're going to a second overtime, 88-88 after the first one between Duke and Arizona. And I should tell you that the special report, ABC News, the Gulf War with Ted Koppel will be next, except on the West Coast. Five minute overtime. Brian Williams uh, fouled out in the first overtime. We may not have many folks left. I'll tell you one thing, you think Duke's gonna make their flight at 1230? <laughs> <laughs> See, right now, Williams is out of the game, but again, the advantage to Arizona because they have the bodies to rotate. Start this with a jump ball. You start this with a jump ball. You don't start with alternate possession. This starts with a jump ball. Lutz right. Jump yeah, ball. Uh, we started the jump last ball. overtime. With the overtime ball. start with a jump ball. Yeah, Richie. <laughs> Look at Richie. Richie. Laughing about it. Look at Mike. He's calm as can be. Looks like a banker. Everybody's a little tired. I guarantee you. Alternate possession doesn't go here on an overtime. No. You start the game with a jump ball, and you start the overtime with a jump ball, and you give each team one timeout. More. Slap deep in backcourt. Othic runs it down, and uh, the Wildcats will get the first opportunity. Chris Mills has been pretty quiet of late. Oh, Duke rotated his zone for the first time. Yep, going to a 2-3 zone. They had worked on it earlier in the week. Well, they're trying to protect some people. They're tired, a little fatigued, and the zone gives you a chance yeah, to Yeah, but that makes, look at Stokes. See, Stokes has got Grant Hill on him. He's got a huge advantage. Uh, Sean Rooks has got a big advantage over him as well. Well, if they overload on that side of the floor, see if they go with Othic right now and get the angle, they're going to overload. They're going to send Mills. Hey, no, hold it, 
lot of strokes inside. Othic back outside. Now they'll let Mulebach take it. Go. Poor job right there by Kubek not getting a hand up. Didn't get a hand in the face of Mulebach. Three-pointer. Now they got Rooks playing against Hill. Stokes on Leitner. Leitner misses the shot. Got a foul called on Davis. I think Leitner is really fatigued because so tired. watching him shoot that ball, he did not shoot with any kind of legs. There's the whole winning streaks. That's what the scrap is. Those two go head to head tomorrow. You know, V. Can they break that 29 game win streak in Aggieland, New Mexico State, Las Cruces? You told me it's a great place. I've never been there. Oh, sure. I've never been there. Looking forward to it tomorrow. Kind of out of the way a bit, but. See, they each get one more timeout. That's why they have two remaining. Both are in a bonus. I thought that Leighton really looked tired in that last possession. Tired. And he should be tired. The pounding he's had to take from all those big people. He had a little bit of rest in the first half. That's all he's had. He's saying, where are you, Cherokee? Why couldn't you be here this year, <laughs> Cherokee Park? Great high school player of the game. And both. And it's now 93-88, five-point lead, Arizona. Well, you'd have to say this is a must, a must possession. Kubek inside Leitner, hooks it up, no, rebound, Stokes had it, and they blow a foul on Kubek, if it's Kubek, it's five. See, I really believe that Christian is really hurting a little bit physically right now in terms of fatigue. Watch when he catches the ball down inside here, I don't see any kind of leg power any kind of power out of his legs in terms of exploding on a shot what an outstanding college game though Keith I keep trying to tell you it's not like this in football you're gonna to have to come with me I'll show you hey you know what I got a lot of calls from guys during the week after I said that to you they said boy do you forget three weeks earlier right yeah. by your house in the yeah. Super Bowl I forgot about it <laughs> Muehlbach on the line for two. Two here. Pretty tough. He makes this. They're up seven, Keith, with 342. The other day, I had a game Michigan and Purdue. Purdue was down seven away from home in the OT and came back and won it. Seven forward lead. McEffrey is in the game at the guard spot with Hurley. Ryan Davis, Leitner, and Grant Hill. Hothick on Hurley. Hurley inside, got it. Is he a tough little competitor? Spots the opening in the defense. He drives through there with such confidence, and he converts in a must situation. Hothick. He's fanning them, taking them to the sideline. I think he knows that and wants to spin back to the middle of the court. They're going to use some clock right here. Well coached. Somebody's got to come help. He picked up his dribble. Hills see, does now. See, Grant Hill should have beat him to the spot there with quickness. But Grant's playing in his second overtime with four fouls. He's playing one of the better off. Hills gets inside. Leitner knocks the ball out of his hands. It's rolling around. And finally, it's slapped out of bounds by Stokes. And Duke's going to get the ball. 2.40 to play. Arizona could have really shut the door if they would have scored there. Now they give again a little life to Duke. And this guy seems to always find a way to make something big happen with a possession. There's the double stack along the baseline. Oh, trying to curl move from the captain. Early for three. Doesn't go. Womack the rebound. Talk about using some clock, and get into a little bit of their delay, spread the court, and switch it on any lateral movement. 95 90, Arizona inside, Chris Mills, 3 1. A breakdown by Grant Hill defensively. Easy basket by Mills. Grant Hill is so tired he can hardly walk. He is really dragging. 
Hurley goes around, I think, gives it up, bounces out to Leitner. That won't go down. Mills battling inside for the rebound, and we got a whistle and a foul on Mills. You know, it's amazing. You look at Bobby Hurley. He doesn't look tired at all. He's still playing with that same spark. Brooks is going to come back. Mills is gone. Womack is, is coming out, but Womack, I think he wants to keep him out there. Yeah, we have, we'll have to keep Womack out. Now Reeves is coming. Oh, I see. They're going to go maybe to a three-guard set now. Yep. yep. They're going to go to Reeves, Muldock, and Alfred. Yep. That's what they practice. These two transfers, there they are, hugging one another. Says, I love you, Chris. I love you. 18 big ones, Chrissy, baby. Yeah. 147 to go in the second overtime, 97-90 Arizona. It looks like they will maintain their home winning streak and push it to 61 consecutive games. And were they tested at all today or oh, what? Oh. And it drops through for Grant Hill, and uh, let's check in with Cheryl Miller. Well, Keith and Dick, is there, if there's going to be an MVP of the game, it has to go to the crowd. The fan support here has been unbelievable. you got to consider this. There are no professional sports in Tucson, so the Wildcats are the main attraction. This crowd won't simply allow this team to lose here. Rebound picked off in the middle of the lane by Othic. Dueling now with Hurley. It seems that the Wildcats have control. See, they're going to their spread offensively. Spreading the court, putting the ball in the hands of the little guards. Use the big people as release men. Buhlbach to Rook, slams it in there, and that's it. That's clinic 101 and how to run the spread game, penetrate, dump it down. McCaffrey doesn't get it. Rebound, Rooks. It's over, Mr. J. It's over. 99-91. Coming up on a minute. 61 in a row. Intentional foul right there. But as you would have expected, Duke gave it a game, the uh, game shot, game try. Oh, they're just a bunch of tough kids. Let's paint the significance of the game. As we remind you again that Ted Koppel comes along with a special report on the Gulf War, except on the West Coast. Keith, I really believe that Arizona now stays in the hunt for a number one seed. I think it's a lock UNLV in the West, Arkansas Southeast, Ohio State in the Midwest. Who will go to the East? Will it be North Carolina? Will it be Syracuse? Will it be Indiana? Will it be Arizona? Or will it be Duke? It will be the team, I believe, that finishes super strong. Arizona can make a case. They've beaten Arkansas. They've beaten some good people like East Tennessee State. And now beating Duke and plus UCLA twice, they can make a case if they win their next four, Stanford, and then next five, and then four times in a row against Oregon and Oregon State. Early again with a foul, but it's now just a matter of running out the clock. They have a unique scheduling. I see where they play Stanford, then they play Oregon, Oregon State on the road, and then they come back with Oregon and Oregon State. Yep. These kids, though, there's Tommy Yamaka. I think he's got the makings of Peter Cadet, who's going to be the head coach at West Point, coached in Kuwait. I think Tommy Yamaka is one of the next bright young assistants who in about four years will be a head coach somewhere. He's a leader, former point guard, great school at Duke. He's been part of a winning tradition. Mike Krzyzewski went on and on with me and said he will be the next Randy Ayers as a head coach on a collegiate level. Intelligent as you can imagine, just a class act. Antonio Lang just checked into the ball game for Duke. He's the young man who came out of Mobile to go to school in there. He was a valedictorian in high school. He was a high school All-American. Who a good player at Duke. Not getting the kind of playing time I'm sure he'd like, but he'll eventually get it. Second one was and go. It's 101-91. It's a 10-point lead in the top. Ticking away as you see there. Leitner puts it up. Hill rebounds it. McCaffrey tries for the shot, can't get it. Leitner takes it inside for two. Nice pass by McCaffrey. They've done an excellent job in scouting. Noah McCaffrey's the shooter. Look at the strength of this guy with the lock in his hand. He's so strong with the ball. Collard Reeves. Yes, 
No. Not, not a bad record. Hasn't lost the game in four years at home. Matt Muehlbach. That is, uh, that's a remarkable uh, and thing to be able to brag about when you're 60 years old. Oh, wow. <laughs> Last yeah, loss, yeah. 1987, Tim Hardaway, Texas El Paso in the NCAA tournament when they were hosting it. And at that time, you could play in your home floor. This year, they're hosting it here, but they cannot play here. Most likely, UNLV probably will be sent right here to Tucson. I know one thing, if I'm Arizona, I would want to be number two in the West. No, sir. Hill to Leitner, and he lets it go for three. No good. Rebound. Davis pops it back out to Hill for three. He got it. Grant Hill's really had himself an excellent game here. He's had an excellent game. We talk about the great freshman in America, Sean Bradley of Brigham Young University. This guy's got the making of, makings of one. Eventually will be very good. Colin Reeves. Jarvis Lang down in North Carolina, Charlotte, Jamal Walker. What a great pass. Milbach out in front, missed it, but so what? The game is over. 61 in a row. And look at this guy. Is he happy? Oh, well, Christian's not happy. Arizona, 103. Duke, 95. And the beat goes on for the Wildcats. Wow, just a great game. Great environment, Keith. Look at these two hugging. Isn't that beautiful to see? Beautiful to see. Two guys with great respect for the game.